Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So today I'm going to do a relatively brief video on Jupiter going into Gemini. We right now have Jupiter in Taurus and it will stay in there till approximately mid-May 2024. So on the 25th of May, we will have Jupiter entering into the sign of Gemini and it will exit on the 9th of June, 2025. So relatively speaking, we've got about a whole year here. And um, also relatively speaking, uh, Jupiter is a 12 year cycle. Um, so you could go back 12 years and find out from 2024 what was going on back then, especially what was um, being shown to you where you were asked to grow, uh, maybe where you did something um, risky and dramatic in your life, like um, deciding to move across to another part of the world, that type of thing. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments. I would really appreciate it. But before I get into the video, I just wanted to remind you that I do have a new service. Um, my manager for my website will be putting it on as an actual choice and a tab in the next short while. But basically for $50, I'm giving you a combo of astrology as well as a tarot reading. It'll be approximately 30 minutes or so. Um, but what I'm doing is taking the more current energy, so say within the next six months or so, uh, and giving you that as a more of a focus, and then coming behind it with the tarot to see what the tarot has to say. So you can go on my website, balbusastrology.com under services, and you can just pick the custom tab and put in $50, then email me at albusastrology at gmail.com uh, with all your birth details and any questions that you want answered. I look forward to hearing from everybody. I've been having a lot of fun doing it, by the way. Okay, so let's get back to Jupiter in Gemini. It's important to note that Jupiter is in its detriment in Gemini. And one of the reasons for that is, is that Jupiter as a planet rules a sign. Well, it rules Sagittarius, and Sagittarius is opposite to Gemini. So what we're saying here really is the sign that Jupiter rules is opposite the sign that Jupiter is in, which is Gemini, right? Therefore, in detriment. Um, Jupiter as a sign, though, is relatively, uh, or as a, uh, a planet, is relatively lucky, um, and it just likes to bring benefits your way. Um, so when we last look at this uh, Jupiter and Gemini, it was in 2012 to 2013. And previous to that, it was June uh, 2000 to July 2001. So maybe hark back to see what was going on for you if you're old enough to do that. Of interest, though, we are going to have following on the heels of Jupiter uh, coming out of Gemini um, in 2025 we're going to have Uranus coming in to Gemini. I'll talk about that a little bit in this video, but that kind of really warrants a completely different video as well. But it's kind of important with regards to understanding the, um, the general progression of the energies from Jupiter in Gemini to Uranus in Gemini. I looked up uh, some of the countries and cities that were ruled by Gemini. It just is something different to do. And of course, it's the USA, uh, Belgium, Poland, uh, Wales, uh, London, and San Francisco. I thought that was kind of cool. So let's keep an eye on uh, those countries and cities with regards to what happens there uh, with regards to expansion and uh, growth. So Jupiter in Gemini will favor um, Geminis uh, as a sun sign or a rising Gemini. Um, and so that's what we're kind of looking at in terms of really uh, having an effect here, is anything that's going to be conjuncted in Gemini or maybe opposed in Gemini. Um, and of course, for those that have their own Jupiter in Gemini, this will be your Jupiter return year, which is a very lucky year where benefits come your way to really help you out, uh, especially help you out with regards to you understanding the world around you. That really kind of is what Jupiter is supposed to represent. 
Um, but it does also bring in potentially um, teachers of benefits, um, with benefits, um, any advisor, that type of thing that can help you out, right? All right, so when we look at the chart, when we actually have this Jupiter going into Gemini, um, what we have showing is that the Sun will conjunct Venus and Gemini uh, at five and two degrees Gemini, respectively. And of course, that in turn will be conjuncting uh, Jupiter, which will be at zero degrees of Gemini. I thought this was super favorable. We've got the lesser benefic, which is Venus, and the greater benefic, uh, Jupiter, conjunct at this time, along with the most important luminary in the chart, which of course is the Sun. So this, to me, says a very favorable time of uh, growth, generally speaking, and growth in specific areas. I'll cover those in a second. The other thing that we have is um, Mars will be conjunct Chiron in Aries, and the Moon will be at four degrees of Capricorn. At this time, Jupiter will be trining Pluto in Aquarius, so that's a new thing for us to experience in the world. That will actually occur exactly on the 2nd of June, uh, 2024. But Jupiter does form a square with Saturn, um, and in particular, it will be on um, the 19th of August, 2024, so you could note that in terms of an exact square. Jupiter square Saturn, I don't think will be that difficult. The only thing that it could bring in is um, you want to expand something and you got to follow the rules. You're told not right now, you're told a delay. So you would have to look at the actual degrees. And of course, as we go through um, the next year or so, I will be covering this more than once, this Jupiter in Gemini and giving you more detail. This is just really an overview. Um, Jupiter will be, so I'm going to give you now a few, um, just a few dates that I pulled out that I thought were going to be important with regards to this Jupiter in Gemini. So when we look at the ruler of Gemini, we know that it is Mercury. So Jupiter conjunct Mercury uh, will be important, and that is going to be on the 18th of November, as well as the 4th of December, the 26th of December. And that's because uh, that Mercury will be going retrograde. So this is quite a significant time period where we're going to have um, Jupiter conjuncting Mercury on and off, right? And so I would say that depending what you have around in Gemini and what degrees, you may be directly affected by this. And I would say that even though it's going to be retrograde, with conjunction to Jupiter, um, I think there's also going to be illumination here. But if I took it to the collective level, I would say that this particular transit is probably going to bring into focus what? Probably things that are foreign that affect us locally or close by us. Um, if we look at Gemini, travel there is supposed to be short, short-term travel, uh, short-distance travel. Whereas we look at Jupiter being in, say, Sagittarius that it rules, we're looking at long-term travel. So I think there may be something up with regards to, I think, um, better communication, better processing probably of the whole refugee thing, where there's going to be a lot more in-depth discussions and decisions made on how to, I think, handle all this, because it's truly getting out of hand in many respects, as we all know. Um, I've already mentioned that Jupiter will square Saturn. That's on the 24th of December, 2024. We're going to have a new moon in Gemini at 16 degrees on the 6th of June, 2024. So this will be a new start, uh, especially for Gemini's ascendants as well as uh, sun signs. So check to see where you've got, say, 16 degrees of Gemini, and if you do, you can look forward to having this year being particularly good for you. That would be the 2024 year to 2025. There's going to be a full moon in Gemini at 23 degrees, and that will be on the 15th of December, 2024. And a final new moon at 6 degrees of Gemini on the 27th of May, 2025. 
just prior to Jupiter then moving into the next sign, Cancer, right? So when we look at Gemini, these are the areas that we really look to in terms of being a highlighted, um, grown, developed, um, spoken about, thought about, written about. And that's anything to do with communications, computers, Dis diplomacy will be high because Jupiter also rules the law and really looks to foreign relations as well, right? Short-term travel, generally speaking, with just Gemini now. Teaching, writing, gathering information, trade and commerce, um, and generally speaking, intellectual activity. Um, now, I also saw that this Jupiter in Gemini, because Gemini as a sign can be a little bit of a trickster too, and so I thought, because Jupiter expands everything it touches, I thought, well, this could bring to light um, somebody who is a bit of a trickster uh, during that year time period, who maybe pulls the wool over some of our eyes, um, unbeknownst to us, right? Kind of a bit like the mythological uh, figure of Pan. But the general idea too here beyond all this communication, writing, thinking, intellectual things, also socializing, of course, um, you know, would be that we want to work with others, right? And as I mentioned, Jupiter rules Sagittarius, which is opposite Gemini. So this does bring in this foreign element as well and long distance travel. And it could be just, you know, as a, as a general theme, um, that year of uh, 2024 to 2025, a lot of us get to do the travel we wanted to do, especially international travel that maybe we've been literally putting off for years. All right. Um, when we look at a Mercury retrograde, that's going to be happening on the 21st of September, 2024. Um, that's the first Mercury retrograde. That will be in Virgo and Leo. Now, we know that also Mercury rules Virgo as well. So I thought that this was also an important um, retrograde of Mercury. And in particular, of course, it's going to square Gemini. And that would be, of course, squaring Jupiter. Uh, especially when it goes direct, um, that square will occur on the 21st of September, 2024. Now, Mercury uh, in retrograde in Sagittarius at 22 degrees of Sagittarius will be in November. Uh, and that it will go direct opposite Jupiter on the 27th of December, 2024. So this is yet another Mercury retrograde that involves um, this um, Jupiter being in Gemini, right? And so I saw this as potentially tension, international tension of some sort. So this, I think, is more on a collective level, unless you've got something, say, around the 22 degree mark of uh, Gemini or uh, Sagittarius or Gemini, actually, um, where there may be some uh, miscommunications for sure. Uh, but that foreign element's brought in. So it could be around that time. So this is kind of around Christmas time period of 2024. You know, the ruffled feathers may not be smoothed over by diplomatic relations and you might have to really work hard. But the important thing is, is that Jupiter rules Sagittarius where this Mercury retrograde is going to occur. So I would just make note of these time periods, the retrogrades as just taking care with messages and um, double checking to see that you are receiving all your messages. I just had this happen to me, by the way, um, where for some strange reason, a number of messages coming from clients um, just went into my spam and I just happened to go in there and take a look at it. So just a heads up, that's the sort of thing you want to look at. Anything to do with computers. Signing contracts, um, you know, I think if you've already made the decision uh, prior to the Mercury retrograde, whichever one it is here that uh, is occurring, probably won't be such a big deal. Um, uh, we still have to go on with our lives. So just, just take care with all the details, right? 
The devil is in the details. When it's a Mercury retrograde, that's it, really speaking, right? And it just may mean to us that we've got to go back and look at some of the details that are written that we overlooked. That's how I look at a lot of Mercury retrogrades. Okay, I'm just going to mention briefly here that, as I said at the beginning of the video, we have Uranus that will also be going into Gemini. Now that'll be on the 7th of July, 2025. So hey, that's just going to be a little bit around a month after Jupiter exits a Gemini. And so in many ways, this Uranus going into Gemini, Gemini on the 7th of July, 2025, kind of picks up the thread of whatever Jupiter expanded or brought to light uh, for us individually as well as collectively. Uh, it will leave, um, you know, later on. Uh, generally speaking, we have uh, Uranus stay for a number of years uh, in a sign. So this won't be leaving in a year like uh, Jupiter will be. It'll be staying there for quite some time. And at that time, um, we will have, interestingly enough, um, Venus in Gemini will conjunct Uranus as well in 2025. So that will be important too. I think that may signal um, some flurry of communications and information coming in, I think, regarding um, money, all our money systems of any sort, maybe even introducing new regulations at this time. But I just saw this as a big flurry of um, communications and unexpected stuff going on. And I think it's to do with our money markets there. It's kind of long overdue that we get an overhaul. Now, um, speaking of Uranus and Gemini, the last time this was here was August 1941 to June 1949. And I guess we could say, generally speaking, um, that certainly encompassed uh, some of the time period for the Second World War. Uh, and other important discoveries as well, right? Nuclear energy was coming into the fore at this time. Um, I think we're, we're moving up beyond trying to go into war and use things against other people. I like to think that this is going to bring in an age of kind of enlightenment where uh, we start speaking uh, in ways that we work with other people. That's very Gemini. Um, and maybe even our thoughts will link up. I know that sounds um, a little bit out there for some people, but you know, Uranus is an enlightenment planet. And of course, uh, Gemini is our thoughts too. So this could have a lot of people becoming enlightened at that time, right? Over that whole time period. All right, let's go into all the sun signs as well as the ascendants. I'm just gonna talk briefly about each of these. But do bear in mind um, that Jupiter will stay in whatever house I discuss, for you specifically, for a year. But Uranus follows behind it and will stay in there for many years, bringing more enlightenment and change your way. So, as a general idea, I would suggest that whatever house Jupiter in Gemini is in, you pay attention to what is brought to light for you, what you're asked to grow, um, any kind of communications or writing that you might do, how that's going, um, diplomacy if you're involved in that as well. Just pay an extra attention to all those different areas, even pay attention to your thoughts. Because as I said, as soon as Jupiter leaves, Jupiter's a positive influence, Uranus comes in and sweeps up stuff that's not supposed to be there. So why not do some work during the time Jupiter is in Gemini in that regard? So when Uranus comes in, it's not big surprises, it's um, nice surprises. All right, so we're gonna start off with um, uh, Gemini. And Gemini, of course, this is going to be in your first house. This is all about growth and followed by action when we got Uranus going in there. 
So this could be, you could go, depending how old you are, Gemini, you could go back 12 years and ask what was growing in my life, what was brought to my attention. Um, was there a writing project that I got involved in or a sales and commerce project, that type of thing. Now for some, it could take all those activities, whichever ones seem to per pertain to you. It could also be education too, by the way. Um, and then there's a, there's a new level here that comes up for you, Gemini, uh, for you to step into in terms of your growth. But make no mistake about it, Gemini, this is a growth year for you. And it's also about, you know, looking at, with, with Jupiter, um, really looking at what gives you meaning in life. Now, we look a lot to the ninth house for that, but just as a influence of the planet Jupiter here, it may have you thinking during that year, what gives me meaning to life? Well, I would say that's a good activity for you to go through during that year. And maybe start experimenting at reaching out to things that you think might give you meaning in life and pay attention to whether or not they do. Because certainly when Uranus comes in, in July 2025, uh, it will be sweeping things out of your life that really don't um, don't support you, especially don't support your growth. Now, some of these things can be very pleasant. They could be a pleasant, uh, fun surprise or a nice surprise coming into your life. Now, you will have during the uh, Jupiter in Gemini year, you're going to have um, at least the latter half of Saturn in Pisces squaring your sign. And so I think it's a nice balance, Gemini, for you to have because what that's going to set up is this dynamic of, wait, are you sure about that? Do you want to grow that? Do you want to go ahead with this? Have you done a good job at the writing? Um, do you need to clean up the way you communicate? Are you playing fair with everybody? That type of thing. Whereas Saturn says, think about that. Or wait a minute, let's go back and see if everything's correct in that writing project that you're doing. So that's the nice thing I think that Saturn squaring your sign will bring in for you, uh, Gemini. I don't think it's a, a negative thing. Now, we're still going to have um, Neptune uh, in, it's really towards the end, like 28, 29 degrees. Um, but if you are a Gemini that has something towards uh, the latter, part of Pisces, you will also have that whole uh, Neptune squaring you as well. And this can just bring in doubts and confusion too. It's almost like there's going to be a lot of optimism with the Jupiter. Um, and then there's going to be this, this squares of saying, but just take care. Are you sure that's right? Or a rule comes in, a regulation comes in, a supervisor comes in and says, you know, I didn't quite like how you uh, wrote that last report. I'd like you to do this and change that. And that's part of your growth. Take care, Gemini. All right, Cancer, uh, Cancer this whole uh, Jupiter in Gemini for a year uh, is going to be in your 12th house. And then followed by that, you're going to have Uranus in the 12th house, uh, enlightening you and uh, shaking up things uh, probably deep down inside you just to bring more um, enlightenment into your life, basically. You may also get involved with a lot more um, metaphysical things at this time that maybe bring enlightenment to others. And this becomes a long-term type of thing with Uranus staying in um, Gemini for a lot longer than Jupiter. Certainly it's going to bring enlightenment your way. Um, and as I said, the physical uh, side of it will be the metaphysical side. Um, it can bring in surprises with regards to hidden enemies. So there's that negative part with it as well. Um, it could have you getting really serious enlightenment in hidden places like ashrams. This would be a great year to plan some visit there. Um, it may also have you, for some reason, um, you know, Jupiter brings benefits, so it could be you bringing benefits, say, to somebody in a hospital setting where you bring something like gifts 
Maybe it's just your personal gifts that you have to those less fortunate in the hospital setting. It also could have you um, dealing more behind the scenes with government offices for some, some reason or other. The 12th house, as I always say too, is a house of healing and rest. So for some cancers that may have been overdoing it, maybe that year of 2024, 2025 is gonna be a time when you say, uh, I'm gonna take advantage of growing uh, as much rest time as I possibly can get. <laughs> that would be fun. But don't forget, as you're you know, going into your mind a lot more and looking under uh, carpets that you may have ignored for some time, that in June 2025, you will have Jupiter going into your sign, bringing growth, uh, luck, and benefits, uh, including beneficial people coming your way, Cancer. Take care, Cancer. So Leo, um, this whole Gemini and Jupiter uh, is sextiling your sign, and it is in your 11th house, mainly of friendships and groups you belong to. So this could give you some unique opportunities to develop friendships, not only locally, but also internationally. There may be some kind of reason that you're given this opportunity to bring in um, this element, not only of your neighborhood and local um, area that you live in, but also that there's maybe this international element that comes into your life as well. It could also mean that you not only travel locally, but you have to do some international travel as well for some reason. Uh, and it might be as a result of some of the groups you belong to. This could be like conferences that you have to go to be because you belong to, say, a certain society. But it can also, at a really high level, Leo, have you be given the opportunities to have some dreams and wishes come true for yourself. So I would say um, that it might be a good idea for you to consider uh, either putting a vision board together or at least spend some time looking at important things that you want to come true with regards to your hopes and wishes. For those that have their own business, this 11th house represents the money that you make in your own business. And so you may be given opportunities to earn more money in your own business. Nothing wrong with that. But friends could play an instrumental role here uh, in some way as part of your growth. Perhaps you will take on new friendships um, that help you grow, literally, right? You will have a Mercury uh, retrograde in Leo in July, 2025. So this will be just after Jupiter leaves uh, the sign of Gemini and goes into Cancer. And so this could be a time period where after you've done all this growth and that, that you have to maybe uh, reconsider some things that you've maybe initiated with friends or with groups that you belong to or groups uh, that you've belonged to or some of your hopes and wishes you may have identified and maybe started to move forward with, having this retrograde says, wait a minute, I may have to reconsider, rework some of this, um, these things that I was looking at for this past year or so. It may involve too, because um, Leo does involve children as well as loves, it may mean that you have to take a love or a child into consideration during the retrograde period of uh, Mercury retrograde in your sign, Leo. But as a whole, I would say this is excellent for you. And then of course, once July comes along, not only will you have the Mercury retrograde in your sign, but you're also going to have uh, Uranus visiting your sign for some years to come. And I would say that that could shake up um, in a positive way, give you opportunities maybe to work in unexpected, unusual ways with friends and groups for many years to come. Take care, Leo. All right, Virgo. So Virgo, this placement of Jupiter and Gemini actually squares your sign and it involves your 10th house of career and long-term goals. So this really says to me that um, you're going to have some restricted growth. And so with 
With Jupiter, Jupiter can sometimes go too far. <laughs> it can get too optimistic. It can take too many risks. So this is actually just pulling the reins in a little bit in your career, where you may just have to toe the line a bit more for a year. It doesn't mean you won't get benefits. In fact, what it does say is uh, paying attention to challenges in your career could bring success your way at the end of this whole period of Jupiter uh, being in uh, Gemini. Because of course, after that, you're going to have Uranus squaring your sign. Um, Uranus square in your 10th house could just bring big shakeups to your career. And you know, sometimes those things are not a bad thing. It could have, say, a supervisor unexpectedly leave. So we're talking about now the influence of uh, Uranus coming into your sign right after Jupiter leaves uh, it, towards the, the uh, middle of June uh, 2025. And then in July, when Uranus comes in and squares your 10th house. Um, what I would do if I had this placement, Virgo, is I would now, if you're listening, I don't know when you're listening to this, I'm making this um, towards the end of June 2023. But I would start looking now at my career, people that I'm involved with in my career. You know, are there any um, weak spots there or difficult spots there where maybe you could set in motion something now that could build towards next year? when Jupiter actually goes into Gemini and squares your 10th house, where you're going to shore it up a little bit? Or do you need to be the person that changes your career and that you make that change, the square, it's not always easy to leave your career, and decide to go into something completely different? So you're going to have to each individually, as Virgos think about that, um, but that's how I would use that. I would think about, you know, do I want to change my career? Well, why don't I take the action to do that instead of letting something come in to make me change that? Because Uranus will come in. It'll sweep in there after that Jupiter comes out and say, I got to clean up here. Um, you need to get things uh, moving. We got to get some things jettisoned out here that you've not gotten out. But it can bring in um, a lot of Humanitarian types things. So say you decide to go into this humanitarian type of career um, once we have Uranus going into your 10th house or squaring your 10th house. Well, this is just going to bring uh, challenges you for you to put it all together. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen. But that would also be a good way to use the Uranus square, your 10th house is to get involved in humanitarian types of efforts um, where you will have to put in efforts, work with others to make things happen. But it's a positive side of using the square, right? It does require you to think outside the box. So you, you may have, especially when Uranus is in uh, squaring your, your 10th house in Gemini, it could have you having too quickly in your career um, make changes. And some of the changes may provide you challenges, but don't forget you will grow as a result of it, right? And there's always other positive things going on. Uh, in particular, um, the North Nodes are going to be in your fourth house. Um, so, and then you're going to have actually uh, a total full moon eclipse in March 2025, just prior to Jupiter leaving Gemini. So that probably is going to provide some kind of big um, signal for you, that total full moon eclipse in March 2025, Virgo, uh, in your sign. So I would, I would watch out for that um, as March 2025 being some kind of big turning point for you. Um, when we get closer to that time, I will discuss this in more detail. I'll give you the, the time it happens and the degrees it's at, but I'm just giving you a heads up. Your north nodes in the fourth house, though, do suggest that um, you will be looking at perhaps changing up your home. Uh, your family dynamic may change. Um, associations with your mother may change as well at that time. All right, we'll just leave it at that. Um, the south nodes in particular will be in Virgo in January, starting in January 2025 for about 18 months.
And so this is all about you letting go, right? Generally speaking, or incorporating all those many things that you know, but really pointing more towards uh, the North Nodes, which will be, of course, in Pisces. I can discuss that more later on, uh, but this tells me that this time period that I'm discussing in this video is a time for you to seriously consider, especially your career, and of course your home situation at this time. So you can start giving that some thought now. Take care, Virgo. All right, for Libra, this trines your sign and it is involves the ninth house. Well, there's going to be a new moon eclipse that's going to happen in Libra in October 2024. And I also want to mention that Pluto will trine Libra in 2025. So that's really positive, all those things that I've just mentioned. But let's go back to the whole Jupiter trining uh, your ninth house. So this is going to bring in some favorable energy to all these areas that I'm going to now mention. Favor favorable energy is for anything to do with the law, especially as you're Libra, and you also have involvement of the law in your sign. Um, it can also bring in anything to do with, say, um, perhaps tying up over the time period of 2024-2025 of what? Travel. Maybe you're doing some kind of big travel over this year and it's tied up, uh, but you enjoy this wonderful period of travel. Or maybe you've got to do more long distance travel. It's all going to be favorable, I can tell you that. If you've got anything to do with advanced degrees and you're tying something up, say in 2025, 2024 to 2025, is going to give you fabulous, favorable energy to make it all happen in a fabulous way. And that would also include any kind of publishing deal too. So for those Librans that are, say, doing that, say you've been involved in some writing project that now you want to get published, this year with Jupiter in Gemini is going to be an excellent time to do it. And let me just say, when Uranus then goes into uh, Gemini and trines, uh, your ninth house. This could bring some exciting opportunities into all the areas that I've just mentioned that are pertinent to the ninth house. So this is a really favorable time period for you, right? The, um, the May 2024 to June 2025. Take advantage of using those energies. And know, like I said, that Pluto uh, will be in Aquarius in 2025, full time for around 20 years, trining your sign. So that's going to bring in favorable energy for any kind of transformation, any kind of truths being revealed to you. Um, it can also bring in power, or maybe you're going to be given some power that favorably suits you, right? Take care, Libra. All right, Scorpio, um, this is in your eighth house. And um, the eighth house is a house that you rule in the natural zodiac. So I see that as a very positive thing. So what are the things that are involved in the eighth house? Well, the eighth house is, a, generally speaking, a money house. It pertains more to investments, pensions, um, 401ks, any money or bank accounts that you may share with somebody else, whether it's through marriage or business. Um, it also speaks to our psychological selves as well. And so there could be some kind of expansion in this area for you, where you grow psychologically. Now, the other thing that it can bring in too is, well, a couple things. Classic astrology says Jupiter uh, in the eighth house signals an inheritance. Now, it's a 12-year cycle, so I would say, generally speaking, you're not going to get an inheritance every 12 years. But you could have um, a favorable opportunity for money to be given to you from another, or benefits being given to you from other. The other thing that Jupiter can represent here is a financial advisor or any trusted advisor that can give you 
advice regarding your investments, shared resources, that type of thing. But also we're going to extend it to psychology and a psychologist or therapist could be of great benefit to you should you choose to do that or feel that's something you want to do. But Jupiter can also expand serious deep sexual relationships as well. So that might also come in for you over this time period if that's something that you've wanted to have develop in your life. Again, we can go back and look 12, if you're old enough, go back 12 years or even 12 years after that, 24 years, and see what was coming in for you around that time period. Um, just to give you an indication of what, what might be up at this time. But as a general theme, I think you could be entering into a time period where you're going to be setting up some real favorable growth long-term for all your investments. Uh, the only thing I would say negatively is just take care. Um, Jupiter likes to take risks and there's nothing wrong with taking risks at the appropriate time. Um, I'm just getting an intuition that if you are going to take risks with your money, Scorpio, I would seek out at least uh, some person that you trust that can um, double check um, any information that you may have or any decisions you might make before you make the decisions. But you could make some very lucky decisions here regarding money and investments. Take care, Scorpio. All right, Sagittarius. Well, you know, Jupiter rules your sign. Um, so this is a good thing for you, just generally speaking, right? You're always going to, you're always going to be turned upright. You're always going to have that soft pillow to land on, uh, generally speaking, as a Sagittarius. Um, but this is opposite your sign, Sagittarius, and it's in your seventh house. So it really puts a focus more on your partnerships, whether it's a business partnership, a marriage, uh, it can be clients, uh, but it can also be any other. And any other can be anything from a financial advisor, um, a lawyer, um, you know, even a physical therapist, that sort of thing could all come into play. Anywhere where you kind of have to work with another and there's usually a contract that might be involved that you have to sign, or a waiver that you've got to sign off on. But generally speaking, when I look at this, I think your partner is going to be coming into focus for you. They may be growing in ways that um, are very beneficial for you. So it's like your partner is going to be growing and you're just going to be looking at it and perhaps benefiting from that. Um, so I would say that's a positive thing. You could also at this time, if you do as part of your, your job, have clients, you could see a big increase in clients. You could even maybe have some very uh, lovely benefactor uh, appear in your life and uh, become a client for you. Um, lawyers can be very beneficial for you too at this time because Jupiter rules lawyers as well. Um, you could just, you know, in the most positive way, take this long travel with your partner, and it's absolutely fabulous. But when we look at an opposition, there can be some kind of discord of some sort. So it could be that your partner is growing in ways that you feel you're left out, and you don't like it, right? So there could be that set, that dynamic set up for you. Um, but remember that you can also grow through your partner at this time. And I think that's how I'd be looking at this setup is I can grow with my partner. I don't just have to let my partner grow on um, his or her own, right? Now you will also have Saturn uh, squaring your sign, you know, during the, the Jupiter in Gemini part of it at least. And so this also kind of puts a um, um, a delay potentially on some things for you. Maybe you want to move forward with some things, um, whatever it is. It could be you um, want to move forward with maybe some kind of publishing deal, some kind of um, maybe education. You want to take some advanced education and you've got to jump through some hoops. 
I'm talking about here now, the Saturn square in your sign. It just means delays. You've got to follow the rules and regulations. So that's kind of mixed in with this whole opposition of the Jupiter um, opposite your sign in the seventh house. I would say just pay attention to rules and regulations um, with this whole influence of Saturn squaring your sign, Sagittarius. And try to look at any growth that your partner is having um, of real benefit to you too, especially benefit to your future, right? Jupiter is all about your future as well. Now, for some Sagittarians, you may be getting married because that can come in for you uh, with Jupiter being in your seventh house. Um, so for those that are getting married, 24, 25 time period, congratulations. Um, certainly with Uranus following suit after this, for some, there could be surprise marriages coming in as well. I can talk more about that later. I'm just giving you a little heads up on things that might be coming your way. But certainly with um, Uranus following suit in July 2025 for many years, it will be shaking up your seventh house of marriage partnerships, business partnerships, clients, and any situation to do with others. And it doesn't have to be bad. Um, it may be bringing in that these people, these other people bring some fabulous enlightenment your way and that it's not negative. But there will be a shakeup of your seventh house with Uranus in there for a number of years. We'll talk about that more over the months and the years that come Sagittarius. Just enjoy this whole Jupiter uh, in your seventh house um, and giving growth to your partner, which you will benefit from. Take care, Sagittarius. All right, Capricorn, this is in your sixth house. And the sixth house is certainly a house of service. It is um, a house of health. It is also our day-to-day -day job, or if we don't work, it is what we do day-to-day. So it's asking us to grow here, or it will help us grow here. It will bring in some kind of benefits our way. So, hey, if I had this, I would say this is an ideal opportunity for me to what? Take care of my health. To seek out maybe someone who's a dietitian, someone who's an exercise guru that can help me put together this whole plan for myself to get my health in great shape. So that would be an excellent way of using this. Um, it can also mean that for some Capricorns, I mean, Capricorns are very dedicated and hardworking, generally speaking. It could mean um, that you have to be of service more. And it could be that you have to be of service more in the day-to-day -day things that you do, whether you work or not. And so that might come in as a big theme for you with this Jupiter. But know that it's going to be very lucky for you and it will expand things for you. It'll expand your understanding of the world that you live in, right? It could bring in, um, I'm thinking with Gemini, lots of communications, short travel here and there, maybe in the neighborhood, maybe you're going to be doing, um, I don't know, Meals on Wheels a lot more. You decide you want to do something altruistic for people uh, that are not as um, fortunate as you. And you take something that like that up as a day-to-day -day activity. Excellent way to use it. It could just be that you have to do more short-term travel, uh, either around your city or your state, with regards to the job that you're doing right now. But no, Capricorn, uh, that 2025, most of 2024, but let's say 2025, for sure, we have Pluto <laughs> completely out of your sign, Capricorn. Um, so I just feel this like big um, sigh of relief uh, where I just think you're going to be feeling quite good, uh, all Capricorns, especially those born late in the sign that have still struggled with Pluto. Uh, being in Capricorn at the final degrees, right, in 2023, 2024. Um, big sigh of relief with Pluto going into Aquarius and literally setting you free, right? So that's something to look forward to. 
I think this is going to be really good for you, Capricorn. I get this feeling of really positive health coming your way. And certainly for those Capricorns that have had ill health, we can have this opportunity of Jupiter being um, someone who's an advisor, maybe even someone who's like a doctor that can come in and solve whatever your issue is. So look to that year for those Capricorns that do have ill health to find some very beneficial advisor that can help you with your health. Take care, Capricorn. All right, Aquarius. So lovely Aquarius, this trines your sign and involves your fifth house. Well, that's awesome. So the fifth house, what does it rule? It rules a lot of things, um, but it's true love. It is children. Uh, it is your own business. It's games of chance. Um, it is creative projects. Um, and it's also having fun. So with this trine of favorable energy, Aquarius, please use that time period of uh, May 2024 to June 2025 to really put some times on the calendar to have fun. That's important. This could be a time period where you do have a true love come in for you. This could be a time period for those that want to get pregnant, get pregnant, or somehow are involved more with children in a positive way. For others, it's the time when you decide to set your own business up and you get all this favorable energy coming in to support you to do that. Now, you know that you now are entertaining uh, Pluto in your sign. So uh, from 2025, it will be firmly ensconced in your sign, Aquarius, for approximately the next 20 years. So what does that mean for you? It means major transformation. And so I would say that um, it's a slow, it's a slow energy. So it's not going to be like Uranus where it comes in and swoops in and takes st stuff away or puts stuff in there. Um, I would just say that for that whole time period of the 20 years, Aquarius, that whatever is leaving your life, let it go. Um, I did make a video already on this, Pluto and Aquarius, especially for Aquarians. It might be worth your while uh, getting on my website, uh, my YouTube site, and actually listening to it for your sign. It's going to totally transform your life, Aquarius. So for those Aquarius that they have felt they've been stymied or um, just stuck, this whole thing of Pluto going into your sign will unstick you for sure. Now, it brings truths to life as well. So it will be revealing a lot of truths for you. And certainly if there's anything in your life that isn't helping you transform, and especially if it's holding you back, or if there's some power dynamic happening, this will be taken away over this time period. But, you know, Pluto always, uh, when I've, um, I've had Pluto affecting me in dramatic ways too. <coughs> and it is slow. But Pluto always gives you the heads up. It gives you the tap on the sh shoulder. Hey, you need to let this go. Or hey, you need to change that. <coughs> Excuse me, let me get a drink of water here. Or um, that person has too much power over you. Right? Um, now, in kind, Pluto could be giving you a lot of power right? Not literally, that could be the direct translation here. So for those Aquarians that are, say, getting into some kind of uh, business or a big step up in their career, this could give you true power behind you. So do take care. As always, there comes great responsibility with great power. So do remember that, Aquarius. But enlightenment um, could be there for you in spades. Seriously, at the end of 20 years, you will certainly be a completely different person. Just let go of what is leaving your life. Don't cling to things. Seek out the high road. Humanitarian types of activities are going to be very featured favorably for you. Um, and enjoy the transformation. Uh, like I said at the beginning here, if you've been stymied or stuck, this Pluto will get you unstuck. All right. Take care of yourself, Aquarius. 
All right, Pisces. So Pisces, this uh, Gemini placement of Jupiter is going to be squaring you and it's going to be to do with your fourth house. Fourth house is home. It's your mother. By extension, it's your family. And it's also your habits as well. It can also involve your childhood home too, by the way, not just your current home. And so all these areas are up for some kind of challenge where you're going to have to think outside the box. And um, I would say that, generally speaking, because it's Gemini we're talking about, take great care with any contracts that you sign, anything that you engage into where maybe you got to get repairs on your home, or you're buying a home, or selling a home. I would, if I had this placement, do a triple check of everything. And I would do maybe even a double check of a background check on any contractors that I was using in my home, um, even any real estate agents. Um, I would do all due diligence in all these areas, uh, Pisces, okay? Just to be okay. It doesn't mean things won't work out. So you're buying a home during that time period, 2024, 2025, or selling one. It just means that there might be some challenges. Maybe you've got to change something in the home to get it sold properly. Um, you know, just work with creating things outside the box. Um, be positive with regards to the challenges that come in for you. Check all contracts. Double check all communications. And especially communications with regards to, say, building a home or changing up a home, selling a home, buying a home ask questions. That's one thing I would say with this placement. If you're kind of not quite sure about something, I mean, don't forget, you're still going to have uh, Neptune, even though Neptune rules your sign, Pisces, Neptune's still going to be in your sign at the latter degrees during this Jupiter in Gemini time period. Um, so if there's anything confusing for you regarding anything to do with your home, your family, and your mother, pay attention to it and ask questions. Um, Certainly with regards to contracts and that, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with seeking out professional advice from maybe, maybe even a real estate lawyer before you enter into something where you sign away and you've signed something that you shouldn't have signed. Uh, not trying to frighten you or anything like that. It doesn't mean things won't happen. It just means there'll be more challenges for you with regards to making something happen. So if any of these areas you know are going to be up in the year 2024, 2025, just maybe pay attention and um, see what you can do now to make sure things are not as difficult as they potentially could be. Okay, so I'm just going to mention here a couple other things that are going to be up for you. Uh, I'll, I'll discuss a lot of these things in more detail as the months and years go by. So don't worry about that, Pisces. But you're going to have the North Nodes go into your sign on January 2025. And certainly if you are a Pisces where you do have your own North Nodes, in Pisces. This will be a significant 18 months for you starting in January 2025. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Um, the nodes always go backwards, so they'll start at 29 degrees of Pisces in January 2025. So check, check your placements of all your Pisces, either luminaries, angles, uh, or planets, right? Uh, you're also going to have a full moon eclipse on September 2024. I'll discuss more of this closer to that time, but I wanted to give you a heads up on that. Um, so this is going to bring in probably something um, that will end for you that needs to end. Now that September 2024 will be when Jupiter is in Gemini squaring your fourth house. Um, so maybe something's going to be up for you in September 2024. Uh, regarding that, there's a connection there maybe with your home, your mother, or your family um, that you decide to let go of that you don't want anymore. Or maybe it's just a home uh, that you decide to let go of. Uh, that eclipse can go either way, you know. It can take things out or bring things in. Full moons, I know, generally speaking, say a culmination. Certainly, there will be a light shone on something in your life uh, at that time, September 2024. Um, that will be important for you to look at, uh, Pisces. But having your north of the north nodes going into your sign in January 2025, still under the auspices of Jupiter in Gemini, is absolutely fantastic. That's, you know, new destiny energy coming into your sign. And depending what you have in Pisces and where it is, 
will also determine uh, the timing of different things, right? All right, take care, Pisces. So Aries, this lovely Jupiter in Gemini sextiles your sign in your third house. And so we're talking about all third house matters here where opportunities are going to come in. So there's going to be some areas where you're going to get maybe a sales or commerce situation uh, set up where you get a chance to maybe move forward with it. For others, it could be writing projects come in. And for still others, there might be some kind of educational pursuits that you luckily get an opportunity to, to do. I mean, a lot of corporate, especially the large corporate uh, organizations offer uh, wonderful opportunities to develop yourself for free. And so maybe you're going to, Aries, discover some of those and develop yourself a little bit more, right? Now, when we look at the effect of Jupiter expanding um, our view of the world, this is really expanding the view of your neighborhood, your city, maybe your state. It could also have you expanding the, those views of your neighborhood and city as a result of you getting involved in maybe some short-term travel within those boundaries. So short-term travel opportunities could come up for you too, Jim, uh, with this Gemini placement. And writing projects as well, opportunities in that area. You may also get opportunities to interact with your neighbors more for some reason, as well as your siblings. But certainly communications or communicating with people is going to be more active at this time. That whole time period from May uh, 2024 to June 2025. You will have the North Node um, go from your sign, Aries, to Pisces in January 2025. And so big change in your life will be kind of wrapped up around that time, January 2025. You will have a new moon in Aries in March 2025. That's something to look forward to. We will still have the positive influence of Jupiter in Gemini at that time too. Um, and you might want to note this too on your calendar. You're going to have Neptune go into Aries in July 2025. And so this is going to usher in potentially um, a real spiritual development and dimension to your life, Aries, um, where great compassion will be your calling card. I'll talk more about this later, but I'm just giving you the heads up on this. Now, on the negative side, um, Neptune in your sign can bring in some confusion or doubt. I think that's the bigger word where you're doubting things. Um, so just be aware of that, that there may be these time periods where you're doubting yourself. Well, there's nothing wrong with really doubting yourself. Um, Aries likes to move forward all the time and take action. So maybe this is going to be a time when you slow down a bit and you consider what you're doing. So that could be the positive side of Neptune going into your sign, Aries. But enjoy this Jupiter sextiling uh, your third house for having really positive communications with everybody. Uh, it can also encompass positive communications with Jupiter-like people. So that's any advisor, government uh, official it could be. It could be a lawyer, um, financial advisor, that sort of thing uh, could really help you out with regards to, say, communications, writing up your will, uh, or anything like that. Take care of yourself, Aries. All right, Taurus. So Taurus, this falls in your second house, this Gemini uh, placement of Jupiter. And so the second house represents a few things. It's the income that we earn. Um, it is our value system. Um, it's a house that you actually, in the natural zodiac, rule as a sign. I think we're going to find here that um, you're going to have the potential to earn more money. And so I'm making this in advance. I'm making this in towards the end of June 2023. If you're one of those Taurians that's saying, I'd really like to be earning more money here, well, maybe you can start slowly exploring that so that when you've got this placement of Jupiter uh, in your second house, 
right? Giving you benefits, bringing beneficial people in, bringing money potentially in for you, that you already have thought through some of the motions that you want to take to get more money in your life. Just as a sort of general influence for some Taurians, you may just increase all the possessions that you end up buying. You may also want to buy a lot of stuff. <laughs> you know, Jupiter just likes to expand. And so Jupiter is also um, going to want to encourage you to buy more possessions. So again, maybe you want to think about, well, what's important in terms of possessions that I would like to put into my life, not just going out buying everything. So there's two sides of that coin, right? Potentially earning more money, but then you're going to want to spend more money. I like, though, better, uh, because you ruled the second house, is for you to spend some time thinking about your value and to, to also spend some time thinking about uh, what do I value, right? Because Jupiter in here can really bring a light to that. Maybe your values aren't quite up to par. Maybe you need to brush those up a little bit. Maybe you are not valuing yourself enough. And Jupiter in here can bring in maybe somebody who could actually help you, like a coach, for instance, to help you see how valuable you really are. But certainly Jupiter coming in here could be A, you getting another job that brings more money, or the job that you're currently doing uh, where they say to you, we really value you and we want to give you A, this bonus, or B, we want to give you more money in terms of your income. Now, you will during this time period having uh, Saturn sextiling uh, your sign. Um, and the 11th house is involved here. And so that's a really positive influence of bringing structure into your life here, Taurus, in a very positive way, where you can also use the rules and regulations to make things happen for you, especially with regards to making, say, your hopes and dreams come true. Um, or even having older friends, Saturn can represent that too. So I'm talking about the influence of Saturn here in Pisces sextiling your sign during this whole time period um, of Jupiter in Gemini. Now, we will have Pluto um, in 2025 firmly ensconced in Aquarius and for about 20 years or so. And this squares your sign, uh, Taurus, and involves your 10th house. So what does that say? It says that as an influence, Pluto wants to transform, help you transform that career that you have, those long-term goals that you have. And so it doesn't mean you're not going to be able to transform your career or long-term goals. It just means that you might have to think outside the box in order to do it. Um, there may be some challenges that you have to go through to achieve something more in your career. But please don't take this as a negative thing. Pluto as an influence generally wants to reveal the truth to you. So you may have a lot of truths revealed to you um, over those years of Pluto squaring your sign. And don't forget too, Taurus, that you have to have an exact, really close to an exact placement here with the square to your sign, right? To have a real effect uh, come in. And generally speaking, Pluto works slowly. So I would say, especially with the square Taurus, Listen to those little whispers that come by starting in 2025 regarding your career, regarding people in your career, regarding how you're doing your career, just regarding your career. Um, and especially listen to the truths and especially listen to what's being revealed to you. And it may require you, or at least some Taurus, to step back and say, What's going on here in my career? Uh, maybe consulting with somebody in a position of power to help you see the truth, to help you see the blocks in your career, right? That could also be up here. Maybe you're blocking yourself in your career and consulting with someone who has the power to change that can be a very positive influence here um, of Pluto squaring your sign, Taurus. 
All right, well, I'll be talking about all these influences uh, later, so don't think I won't be doing that. You're going to have Uranus uh, that will come in, swoop in here afterwards for many years, uh, starting in July 2025, influencing that second house. And I think this could just bring in some po positive enlightenment, big change with regards to the money that you earn, big change to your possessions. You know, for those Taurus that are really looking for positive change in their life because they've been going through uh, difficult times here, um, this could just bring in the change that you need. Don't, don't look fearfully at, at this whole Uranus for a number of years going into your second house. Look for it making sweeping changes that are positive for you, that are needed for you, right? But certainly when Uranus takes things away in your second house, let it go. Can't hang on to things. Um, but maybe it's going to take out old values that you've had that um, were not positive for you, that, that really didn't help you in terms of maybe your career. Maybe this is going to bring in a whole new you with regards to how you view the value of yourself and the career that you're in. Bringing in that whole Pluto square here too, right? I'll continue to talk about these things as we go through the months and years, Taurus. Um, but hey, this is positive to have Jupiter always brings in benefits. So expect some expansion in terms of the money that you make for sure. And an increase in the value of who you are by others. Maybe even you realizing how much you are valued by others. Take care, Taurus. All right, so that wraps this up. Um, in a small way, I hope I've given you some idea of some of the areas of your life that might be affected positively. And um, I always love to hear from everybody. Um, let me know, for those that are interested, um, what happens. But I'd also like to know what happened 12 years ago when Jupiter uh, was also in Gemini at this time. It's always cool to, you know, look back in the past to see what was happening. But I'd love to hear from everyone. If you've got something you'd like to say or a question that you've got, please put it on um, the text box and comments below. Um, I will be doing next my August video, so look out for that. I love doing people's charts, so if you would like your chart done, please go to my services tab in um, on my website, alpusastrology.com. All the details are below here in the text box should you want to do that. Take care of yourself. Sending everyone uh, lots of love and lots of positive energy for positive growth, uh, especially with regards to the way we think, right? That's the other thing that Jupiter and Gemini can do. Give us some positive thinking, right? Positive thoughts. All right. Bye for now, everyone. Take care of yourself and lots of love.